whether you're in college, outside of boot camp, there's always a chance to pivot and make changes in your career. Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and today's video is going to be covering my resume that got me my new cybersecurity job as a security analyst. So if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know that I have made previous videos on my cybersecurity resume and my last one was actually just about exactly a year ago in May 2021 and that was my cybersecurity resume from my last job that I have since updated. I definitely have added a few things but also deleted a good amount of experience, skills, and I'll probably explain why throughout the video. And feel free to jump around the timestamps on the video as well. And obviously just be going over my resume from top to bottom, just like last time. And for anyone who's interested, I also have my cybersecurity resume template linked on my career resources website in the description below as well. Okay, so starting off with the very top of my resume at the header, I don't really have anything too special up here. It's really just my name, my email, and my phone number. I keep it very simple. I know some people add their GitHub link, their LinkedIn link, their personal website link, or even their address, but please don't put your address because you really don't need to. You can just put your city and state if you really wanted, um, just for privacy reasons as you know, security professionals. But for the most part, I think website links are fine, especially when you're applying online. It's just something I don't personally do. But also just make sure it's a link that isn't going to be broken at any time because if you change a link to your website or something then obviously it's going to look bad on you okay so jumping into the first section of my resume which is education so for those of you who don't know i graduated from temple university with my bachelor's in information science and technology in may of 2019 so I'm a pretty general IT major and I don't really have anything in terms of educational cybersecurity experience besides my certification in computer security and digital forensics that I also got from my university. It's not CompTIA, it's not, you know, it's not any internationally acclaimed organization. It was just part of my school and I had to take a few extra security and digital forensics classes to get that certification. And I know a lot of people move their education section down to the bottom of the resume or somewhere lower when they start their jobs, but I just haven't done that. Um, I also feel like it's not a huge change for me, at least because I've only started in my second job recently. So maybe if I'm looking for my third job down the line uh, or you know switching to a new position then I would maybe consider moving my education down since then my experience would obviously be a lot more relevant but I just haven't changed that even though I know many people who do recommend moving it down. Alright so going into technical experience this I believe also used to be coding experience or something that was more general but essentially this is where I put all of my coding skills basically any programming languages that I know, any security tools that I use. And I also moved my CompTIA Security Plus certification down to this technical experience section. So there wasn't really a huge reason for moving my Security Plus from education down to technical experience, but I just wanted to separate it from my computer security and digital forensics certification that I got from college, just because I feel like they're at very different levels. So basically my two main sections here, even though they're very short, um, are programming and security slash capture the flags. So for programming, this is pretty generic. You guys may or may not know, but I come from a software development background. So my main experience is in backend development. And then my third bullet in technical experience is security and capture the flag. So I actually watched my previous video on my resume and I had a lot more skills here. Um, I had Bloodhound, Remina, Covenant, LDAP domain dump, a bunch of random things. And I actually took those off of my resume just because I learned those skills and tools from Capture the Flags and I've used them very minimally. I mean, I can probably still answer questions on them during an interview, but I really didn't want to dilute the number of tools that I had on my resume. And I really wanted to pinpoint it to specific ones that I would be maybe even interested in using on the job. For example, Remina is used for remote desktop and I probably would not be interested in using that in a job. I mean, I'm sure there are jobs out there that use Remina, but that's not somewhere I want to take my career. So I took away those tools just because I don't see myself using them in a job long term. But what I did keep were Metasploit, Nmap, and Burp Suite, which are kind of like, in my opinion at least, the holy trinity of tools in cybersecurity. So if you talk to any cybersecurity professional, they probably know what Burp Suite is, they probably know MMAP, they may or may not know Metasploit, but if they're into Red Team or doing Captain Flags, then they probably know Metasploit. So that is kind of the genre, or I guess the 
target roles that I would be looking for. Even though I may not be using these tools in my everyday job, I currently do not use these tools, at least based on my current experience that I've seen in my current job. But there are tools that I would be interested in using if I were to, you know, go down that pen testing route again. So that is why I kind of minimized the tools in my security slash capture the flag section. But of course, if you are a whiz and you know how to use many, many cybersecurity hacking tools at a very proficient level, then of course I will keep those on your resume. Do not remove those just because some girl on the internet told you to. Um, this is just my personal preference. And I do think that if you're good at tools and you've used them many times, I will keep them on your resume. It's just in my case, I didn't use those tools too often besides in Capture the Flags. And that's why I decided to take them off. Okay, now we're going into the biggest chunk of my resume. It has since become even bigger just because I kind of dedicated a lot of space to my previous company. So maybe I'll split this up into my previous company and then all the experience prior to it that I actually kept on my resume. But I've actually removed two or three jobs from my resume since then just to focus on these three specific roles that I currently have on my resume. But one quick note is that my current job is not on this resume yet. Okay, so going into the work experience section of my resume, in my previous video on my experience at my job, and one of you mentioned that it sounded like I worked at a finance company and you are correct, I did work at a finance company um, and that is exactly what I labeled it in this resume um, just for confidentiality's sake. And also, if you guys care about chronological order, I usually place my experience from the most recent at the top and then in chronological order backwards, so if anyone cared. But there's some people who also list the highest relevant job at the top and then maybe their present job, if it's not as relevant, then they'll put it second. So. It's really up to you. I usually prefer chronological order, but it really all depends on your personal preference and the job that you're applying for. Just because recruiters only look at your resume for a few seconds, so you really wanna capture their attention. And if putting that most relevant job at the top of your work section is the most eye-catching, then you should do it. Okay, so the first bullet point I have under my previous company, I just labeled it finance company. That is my DNI initiatives, which is for diversity and inclusion. So you guys know I was very involved in diversity and inclusion in my previous company. It was something I was very personally passionate about. And I was very lucky to be able to work on all these projects and I never would have expected to come out of college and been a program lead for the New York City Grocery Code program for my company. That was honestly a dream come true, just based on my experience from Tech Girls, which is a program that I volunteered for in college where we taught middle school girls how to code. So basically on my resume for DNI in my previous job, I had a Grocery Code LZ New York co-lead for the summer immersion program. And if you guys aren't familiar, Grocery Code is a program that teaches high school girls how to code. And it is a very, very well-known nonprofit that I was very lucky to have been able to work with. And then I was also part of my company's Asian Employee Network Group, which I put here, as well as a bunch of different other organizations that you guys can read through if you want to, but it's really just an example of what you could put on your resume if you know you were interested in any of these DNI things. Okay, so after the DNI section, I have three jobs listed on my resume from my previous employer, and from most recent to least recent, I have automation engineer, pen tester, and an information security consultant slash C# -sharp software developer role. So obviously, these bullet points are a lot more detailed than my previous job or than my previous video where I shared this resume just because I've defined it a lot more after using this resume to obviously apply for other jobs. But yeah, I basically got rid of any confidential words or project names. So you guys hopefully can get some insight out of these bullet points to be able to use and maybe help create your own. But in my most recent team, I was an automation engineer and I basically worked on a lot of Python scripting. I believe that was a team I also made the most work vlogs. So you guys probably have seen a lot of that. Um, so I won't go too in depth into what I do. And in that role, I also work with developers on helping them stay compliant to be able to deploy to production for the applications that were under my team's scope. So that was also a very interesting experience to be able to work on the other side of you know, when code gets pushed and not just writing the code. And then before that, I was working in a junior pen testing team. I focused on a lot of DLP or data loss prevention policies and violations, basically looking for any vulnerabilities or findings that had to do with cookie exfiltration, network security, IP restrictions, essentially anything that you can exfiltrate data and 
that was also a very interesting experience because that was when I first started doing Capture the Flags. All right, so in my role as a C Sharp slash .NET developer, I was doing exactly what you would expect. I was working on pretty stereotypical software development things. It just so happens that the application I was developing was a network security application. So even though I didn't touch as much of the network security side of things, it was still cool to be able to work on it and look at the code and understand what it was doing, even though I didn't actually know that much about the network security side of the application. And because my manager for my first team was actually the lead for product strategy in cybersecurity, I was able to help her with a bunch of different things, including the capability monitoring metrics that you'll see in my description from our resume. All right, so the only other two jobs or work experiences that I've kept on my resume since the last video was my experience as a software engineer at JP Morgan Chase. It was an internship and my other one was as a teaching assistant for four CS classes in college when I was at Temple University. So my experience at JP Morgan was definitely a very positive one. I had a great time in their software engineering program. It used to be called the TAP program or the technology analyst program, but they changed the name the year that I was in the program. So another thing to know, I guess, but basically we built a full stack application in a team of four interns and we presented it at the end. So that was very cool. We chose all the technologies to use. We chose how we wanted the site to look. We chose the layout. Our manager was really there to give any guiding references or any help that he could give with any roadblocks that we might have had. But for the most part, we were pretty much left to our own devices and able to choose whatever we wanted to do with that application. So it was definitely a very good experience. Also my first experience officially with front end, uh, specifically React.js. And I was not a fan, even though I, I'm sure there are many front enders out there that may not like me for this, but yeah, I, I've just never really been that great at front end technologies or front end programming languages. So there's that. And then my last experience, work experience in this resume that I did not get rid of is my CS teaching assistant experience. So I was a teaching assistant for four computer science courses at my school, component-based software design, which was C Sharp, quality assurance and testing, computational probability and statistics, and digital forensics. So those were the four classes. All of them honestly have a special place in my heart, even though they're very different classes. I mean, one of them is coding, one of them is quality assurance. One of them is statistics, which I do not use at all. And then the other one is digital forensics, which is the most relevant to cybersecurity. And I definitely did learn a lot being a TA for that course. But the nature of being a TA is that sometimes you have classes where you're teaching the labs, which was the case for my C-sharp class. I was leading labs with one of my co-TAs. But for digital forensics, I was mostly doing a lot of grading and yeah, exam grading homework grading and exam grading. So they can be very different experiences based on the actual work that you do. But I definitely think that those are very good experiences to have, especially as a college senior, because you kind of get the taste of working, but it's also, you know, in a student environment. And I do believe that teaching a topic is the best way to learn the most about the topic. I know there's some study out there that shows that teaching something helps brand it in your memory a lot more than just reading something off paper. So I definitely recommend it for anyone who's in college or in a bootcamp program. Maybe there's some way that you can actually join the teaching assistant role for whatever degree program or bootcamp that you're in. And those are all the experiences that I have on my resume right now. Previously, I had a data analyst role, a big data undergrad research program role. I also worked at a computer store doing a lot of actual hardware replacements and stuff, but just for the sake of making more room, honestly, for my previous job, because I basically had three jobs in one, I had to delete all of the other stuff. Usually when you're cutting back on your resume, you want to cut back chronologically or from the jobs that just weren't as relevant. All right, the last section on my resume that is very teeny tiny, it is the volunteer and activity section. And this was very generically named. I wish I had a better name for this. I probably will change it the next time I update my resume, which seems to happen about once a year at this point, even though it's recommended that you change your resume every three months or every time you get a new job. So who knows, maybe I'll change it sometime soon. But yeah, this section is basically all of the volunteer things that are just related to me and not any of my previous jobs, as well as any conferences and hackathons that I've been to. So previously, I used to have a lot more on here with the student leadership orgs that I was a part of in college. But for right now, it's just a small section with the conferences that I'm most passionate about. 
Honestly, it could just say Grace Hopper and I'd be okay with that. And Grace Hopper is a woman in tech conference that I've been attending for the past five years now. And this year will be the sixth year if I attend. Hopefully I can still get a ticket to the conference, even though my employer isn't sponsoring the conference. Not really sure what that looks like, but yeah, basically I went two years as a student and then three years with my previous employer. And then for volunteer work, I have Grocery Code, Tech Girls, as well as Ascend New York, which is a organization that promotes Asian Americans, specifically in the business field, I believe. It's definitely more catered towards finance and accounting. That was a volunteer slash conference experience I was able to take part of. So definitely a nice experience for anyone who is interested in more cultural professional development organizations. I definitely recommend going towards those if you're trying to grow in your career or meet like-minded people or just expand your network and volunteer opportunities. It's definitely a good experience. And then at the bottom right hand corner of my resume, it does say US citizen because I actually got this piece of advice from one of my professors slash career kind of counselors in my university. And she mentioned that if someone sees on your resume that you may have a non, I don't know, Eurocentric name, then they may assume that you need sponsorships and a lot of companies may not provide sponsorships and it may just automatically put your resume in the no pile, which is very sad and unfortunate. So yeah, that is why I put US Citizen in the corner of my resume. Let me know if you guys have heard the same or had some experience with that US Citizen permanent resident slash international because it's definitely very very hard to get a job sponsorship nowadays all right that's it for this video let me know if you guys found it helpful and again i have my resume template linked down below on my career resources website and let me know in the comments if you have any specific questions anything on your resume that you might want to discuss and i'll try my best to get back to you as soon as possible thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesdays and sundays at 12 p.m but eventually to Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays at 12 p.m. I'll let you guys know how that goes. Um, but yeah, thank you guys again for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!